What is going on, garden fans? Welcome back to the Permaculture Homestead. I am at the home site today, and I'm going to give you the weekly walk about the Whole Food Forest just to keep up with the content and to continue to give you a look at how this place develops over time. Oh, I'm really staying consistent with it. We did just get a recent rain, and the place always looks better after a rain, so I want to give you a quick walk around the Whole Food Forest. I have no real point in mind. There is just so much growing on. It'd be hard for me to identify everything. So kind of want to peek at some of the things that are fruiting today and then just give you a broad look at how the whole place looks in general. Um, you know that I've been planting out my chamomile seed starts. They're starting to blow up, of course, as my other summer veggies start coming in, the, the squash, the kale, the collards, the zucchini. I'm going to be interplanting them with all this chamomile. And as the chamomile flowers and dies, what I'll have is my summer veggies starting to come up. I've actually pulled out the drip irrigation line out here. The goji patch is very slowly coming back to life, a little bit slower than usual. I might need to go through there and prune it up some just to make it look better. But it's definitely spring. Uh, plants and trees and shrubs are definitely putting on fruit. Looks really good back here and really starting to thicken up already and we are barely touching the, the beginning of spring. So I've got raspberries. The raspberry patch here is certainly flowering and starting to put on fruit. Some of the uh, annual weeds that are coming up like passiflora, passion fruit, are coming in and coming up. I let this grow. This is a host plant for the gulf fritillary butterfly. <clears throat> And just the fruit itself tastes pretty good. So this is always a good one to let grow in your yard if you see it around there. Uh, commonly mistaken with uh, poison ivy because it has leaves of three, but that one right there is definitely passion fruit. I'm going to step back here give you a broad look at the whole place. Uh, the elderberry patch is, of course, blowing up. And this is a giant piece of biomass that provides shade to the back of my house in the hottest part of the year. Uh, the pawpaw patches I have, pawpaw patch here, pawpaw patch here, have definitely flowered. They're starting to put on their summer leaves. And the hand pollination effort that I went through this year, like last year, has certainly paid off. We're starting to get some fruit set on both pawpaw patches. Did a great job cross-pollinating these. Um, and things are thickening up. I mean, it's really got this dense canopy starting to form and the understory and the ground covers are really starting to get shaded out which is not bad once again for us here in zone 8 South Carolina because it just gets so hot out here. Here's some more fruit set on the pawpaws looking really good right now. Those will continue to develop until we get to late fall and believe it or not they are still flowering so I can continue to come out here and hand pollinate. Uh, ground cover, the dominant ground cover right now is going to be clover and some annual weeds. There is definitely some dollar weed and we've got some lamb's quarters coming up. I let these things come up because they are edible so I uh, would hate to call it a weed, really. It's more like a, a, an edible veggie that I don't have to do anything for. I'm going to kind of look up into the canopy here just to kind of show you how tight it is. There is just enough space throughout this food forest for a single person to kind of walk through and get around. And that's kind of how I like it. I really want this place to be absolutely as dense as it is. So things are certainly packed on top of each other. Once again, little tiny walkway here, small area to walk through, just enough for one human to get around. Um, I got this giant Hugel mound back here. What's on it is pomegranate, iliagnus, blackberry, and then a whole bunch of other ground covers, uh, ground covers of herbs that I've been eating on. So lemon balm, this is one I make teas with. Great for anxiety, it's an anti-anxiety. We have mint, which is great for your stomach. And then of course blackberry is starting to flower up, the thornless blackberry varieties that we have. Uh, have a Mexican beauty berry right here. This is kind of the understory to the plum trees that I got in the back. And the plums, both of them, a Methley and a Santa Rosa, are fruiting very heavily. If you were here in the early spring when these things were flowering, I told you that they are going to set a lot of fruit, but that doesn't mean it's going to hold all the fruit. Uh, eventually we'll get some pretty heavy winds and that'll, that'll kind of prune this tree down for me. I don't have to do any fruit pruning myself. Nature kind of does it for me. So plums are certainly putting on fruit. Some other things that are putting on fruit are the mulberries. Let me see if I can get over to the mulberries. Of course the peaches are putting on fruit. 
Now having these dwarfed down the way they are, it does help me manage it a little bit better. Uh, definitely have a lot less pest damage with them being so low to the ground. I have another pawpaw tree here kind of coming up into all this. Uh, next to that pawpaw tree we have a jujube. Big jujube tree. This is over 20 feet tall now and right at the bottom of this jujube tree it's got a whole bunch of companions like winged sumac being one and then of course the eleagnus multifloria gumi berry as the other. So as this little uh, guild here has progressed you can now kind of see that we have this centralized fruit tree that towers up into the sky and then of course all its little companion shrubs around the bottom of it and it of course has that uh, clover ground cover. Uh, other things growing on here we got all types of volunteer uh, veggies and herbs and then just some that I've planted so potatoes are coming up. We've got some volunteer squash coming up with the, uh, the clover that I've planted. And then, like I said, the mulberries are fruiting. So I got one big black mulberry right here that I'm kind of bending and shaping around the food forest. It is starting to fruit and change color. And what I love about this is that all the fruit set does not come on all at once. I'm going to get like a continual fruit uh, set harv uh, throughout the year. Like a so they're not all going to ripen at once, basically. I'm going to get a little bit of fruit throughout the next couple weeks here on both of the mulberry trees I have. Here's one of them. That's a black mulberry. And this is a Pakistani mulberry right here, right behind it. So definitely going to have lots and lots of mulberries this year. Uh, no late frost to kill it all. So looking really good. Um, if you were here for the potato planting, the potato buckets are large and in charge definitely blowing up getting a good amount of rain as these continue to get up i'm going to fill them up with soil and just kind of hill them up so that they're these buckets are filled but it's definitely getting really thick and really dense back here garden fans uh, once again there's kind of just enough room for one one human to kind of walk around the whole food forest and it's really starting to feel like a dense secret garden i enjoy walking out here i'll give you just a broad look at the whole place all types of shapes, colors, sizes, and definitely everything is edible from the ground covers to the uh, canopy layers that we got growing on here. Looks really beautiful at this time of year. I appreciate you all watching. If you're not already, please hit that subscribe button, tap the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. That's what really helps us out. If you have any questions about what I'm doing here or permaculture in general, please just leave them a comment below. Appreciate you all. God bless.